Hello out there, all you styrene users and abusers. This is George coming to you from Kitchen Table Scale Models basement. Um, been been kind of out of the loop a little bit lately. Work has uh, interfered with life, or life has interfered with my modeling. But uh, plus, I've been away the last two weekends pursuing one of my other hobbies and interests, which is showing dogs. Um, but I won't go down that rabbit trail right now. But uh, that's the reason why this 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 video is a little bit a little bit late. This is my response to uh, Jason Hanscom up in New Hampshire at Blue Ox Model Shop, uh, who uh, posed a uh, posed a challenge. He said, uh, Jason asked us. He said, in the event of an apocalypse, be it zombie or otherwise, uh, what five kits? You got five minutes to grab five kits, unbuilt kits to take with you and two built kits now i mean i can overthink this and say that you know in the event of a zombie apocalypse we, you know what am i going to do with five kits and you know am i really going to grab five model kits in the event of a zombie apocalypse or am i going to grab something else uh like maybe my dogs uh or my wife but um i'll, I'll play along um and you know let's 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 jump in um first kit all of these kits are kits that have uh some significance or meaning to me. Uh, a little bit sentimental. Uh, first one, and I'm not going to do an open open box or kit review, but the first one is a 50 Oldsmobile Club Coupe. Why did I pick a 50 Oldsmobile Club Coupe? Well, that's a very good question. Or maybe it isn't a good question, but I'm going to answer it anyway. Um, I picked the 50 Oldsmobile Club Coupe because in 1952, January of 1952, um, I had my first ride in an automobile. Um, on the way home from a hospital uh, in Passaic, New Jersey. Uh, I rode from the hospital in Passaic to my home in the next town over, which was Wallington, and uh, I rode in a 50 Oldsmobile. Uh, that's what my father owned at the time. Um, I don't know what color it was originally, but I, I always fondly recalled my mother's story of... Uh, how my father decided he wanted to do a two-tone green paint job on it and got it repainted. Uh, I think he saw it on a Packard and fell in love with it. And uh, he brought it home from the shop and my mother said, sell it. She said it looked like a big pickle. Um, so we'll start with the 50 Oldsmobile Club Coupe because, well, that's where I started in a 50 Oldsmobile Club Coupe, sort of. So I'm not going to do a kit unboxing. You all know what this kit looks like. It's a great kit. I've not built it yet. I've got uh, these. I think I've got two or three of these on the shelf. I got two of these kits, and I got one of the custom. Um, and I do have a, uh, I do have a resin uh, fastback body to go on one of them. So uh, that's the 50 Oldsmobile. Let's get that out of the way. Next up. Next up. Kind of keeping with the theme of my uh, my father's cars. Um, this is a model house 60 Oldsmobile hardtop kit that I got from model house right before, uh, right before Don shut down the operation. If you've, if you're fortunate enough to have any model house kits or ever having, or ever having had a model house kit, um, I mean, the molding on this, this is resin and, and the molding on this and the detailing is as crisp and as clean as any kit you're ever going to find. But uh, again, 1960 Oldsmobile, 98, my father, uh, my, my parents had one of these. Uh, theirs was a four-door. Uh, regrettably, I always liked the two-door better, but, you know, that was just me. Um, they had a four-door. Can't find a kit for a four-door, but I did find the two-door. And uh, one of these days, I'll get around building it. Uh, basically, this kit, I think, is a knockoff of the old, um, the old Johan kit. Um I'm not going to do a complete review of kit boxing. There's not much to it. It's a it's a promo style chassis and uh, tub interior and chrome parts look pretty decent. I don't think I'll have to read chrome them, but uh, yeah, 60 Oldsmobile. That's what my parents were driving. Was driving, were driving. Um, I think they bought it. Well, they obviously somewhere around 1963, 62. They usually got two or three old cars at that point in, in life. Um, let me just try to put this thing down. I'll get that in the box later. Okay, so that's kit number two. Kit number three, 63 Corvette. I sure wish somebody would come out with a better 63 Corvette kit than this. Um, 
The old MPC Corvette kits, uh, C2 Corvette kits, were absolutely delightful, if you remember what they looked like, or is this a C3? I don't know. Anyway, um, it would be nice to have a good split window coupe. Unfortunately, this is about the best we get. Um, you all know what it looks like inside. I don't have to show you. Why this kit? This kit, uh, this, is, this is a model of a car that... Um, the introduction of the 63 Corvette in the fall of 1962 coincided with my own, what I'll call, automotive awakening. It was when I started paying attention to cars and I realized cars are cool. Um, it's also about the time that I transitioned from building just about any model kit I can get my hands on, regardless of what it was, to uh, for several years doing nothing but automobile automobiles. I have built this kit. I did have... Wait a minute, I just thought of something. Stand by. I'm not going far. I'll be back. I just realized something. I got a 60, I got an original 63 Corvette kit. Here we go. Okay, sorry for that interruption, but this is the 63 Corvette kit. Um, this is the original AMT issue. I picked it up uh, a couple years ago at a swap meet. Or maybe it was eBay. I don't know. Uh, kit's in perfect condition. Um, the molding on it is awesome. Um, it, it's a great kit. Uh, this kit, again, as I said, the, uh, the introduction of the 63 Corvette split window um, coincided with my own automotive awakening, and this was one of the first kits I built to follow that. Um, it was an original issue, 63 AMT hardtop split window. The kit is in gorgeous shape. Um, I'm going to build this sucker one day, but 63 Corvette's important to me because it was kind of the, it, kind of the automobile that hit me square between the eyes and said, cars are cool. Um, so that's the 63 Corvette hard top. Okay, good. Let's put this away. Let me put, let me put uh, the old one away too. There we go. Okay. Next, and not last, and certainly not least, 69 Dart GTS. Why a 69 Dart GTS? Well, if you've seen any of my other videos uh, in response to uh, uh, Jason's uh, Jason Hanscom's muscle car or uh, street machine build. Um, I plan on building this car as part of that uh, and, and, and that group build. The reason I chose the Dart, real simple. I graduated high school in 1969, June of 69. About two weeks after I graduated, I took delivery of a brand new 69 Dart. 340 Swinger, um, similar to the GTS, basically mechanically identical, uh, just didn't have all of the pretty trim and hubcaps and all that stuff. Uh, stripped down interior. Um, the 340 Swinger was a real sleeper. Um, um, I had, uh, I think it was 323 gears I had in mind, 323 Posi. I ordered it originally with a four-speed uh, dealer called back and said, we don't want to order at a factory and order a four-speed because if you decide for some reason you don't want it, we're going to be stuck with it and not be able to sell it. So your choice is to either give us another $500 down payment or um, switch to an automatic. So I kind of begrudgingly switched to an automatic, which is probably a good thing because um, the way I drove that thing into the ground in three short years... Um, I probably would have replaced the clutch 16 times. So uh, that's the Dart, Dart GTS. Um, it's a beautiful kit. You all know what it looks like. You've seen it before. There's been enough builds of it. Uh, I think Grandpa Mark is doing a build of it now on his page. Um, my plan is to build this kit uh, painted in the same factory color uh, that mine was, the B3, uh, bright, bright blue, um, and build... A street machine the way I would have liked to have had my dart. Uh, it was fun having a dart swinger that was really a sleeper. I deleted the stripe when I factory ordered it, so it really was uh, there. Really was nothing there to point out that it was a V8 car, other than the little louvers on the hood, and I had dual exhausts. 
but uh, I even had uh, poverty hubcaps, you know, dog dish hubcaps on it originally. Eventually put on uh, chrome reverses with baby moons, but I'm, that's not the purpose of this video. Uh, so that's uh, that's kit number four. Now, what is kit number five? Well, this one might surprise some of you, and I may need to move the camera out for this, but I figure if we're going to have a zombie apocalypse... An atomic cannon is going to come in handy, even if it is 132nd scale. Why this kit? This is a kit that uh, I remember seeing on the shelf at my local shop uh, when I was a kid. And uh, I won't get into a lot of details. I got an allowance uh, for doing chores around the house. Uh, and I, I saw this on the shelf and I really wanted it, but I, I needed to save my allowance up for several weeks to have enough because at the time I think it was like you know, four dollars or something like that. Um, always wanted to build this kit. And uh, when I went back to the shop after I saved up enough money to buy it, it was gone. Never to be seen again until uh, I think it was somewhere around 2011, uh, Ravel, or oh, it is 2011, somewhere around 2011, Ravel. Uh, repopped a whole bunch of old Renwall kits and this is one of the ones they repopped. It's an awesome kit. It's big. Uh, I don't know how many parts there are on this thing, but it's a lot and uh, it's going to take up some mighty shelf space, but you know what? If those zombies start coming, they're going to have to mess with my atomic cannon. So that's kit number five. Oh, 300 parts. Yeah, that should be, that should be fun. Okay. Oh, and a crew of seven. Can't forget the crew of seven. Hope they don't eat much. So that's, uh, that's kit number five. Now, Built kits. Which two, what am I going to save? I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on these kits um, for a couple of reasons. Let's see if we can zoom in a little closer here. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because uh, I, I want to do a, a, a little bit more of a... Oops, I just lost my hood. I want to do a little more of a kind of a video on this at, at, at a later date. Uh, this is a 1970 GTO kit from uh, the MPC release. Um, this kit was built, um, I guess, somewhere, I want to say maybe late 80s, early 90s. Uh, notable for a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, this is as close as I could get to an exact replica of a vehicle that I owned at the time, and I sold, uh, I guess I had to sell it somewhere around 1987, something like that. Uh, I was going through a divorce at the time, and uh, just couldn't afford to do anything with it. It was literally rotting in the streets, so uh, I sold it to, uh, to a gentleman and his son who was going to do a, do a restoration on it. Um, Nothing special, really. It was a, it was a, it was really kind of a basic GTO, um, standard four hundred, was it three sixty horsepower, or whatever. Um, interior black vinyl. Um, I did have, uh, I think it was three twenty posies or three twenty three posies or something like that, three twenty fives. Um, <clears throat> what did make it unique is um, I, uh, I had factory air. Now, this one doesn't have factory air, but um, model special to me because, it, again, it's a replica of a car I owned, and uh, I always thought the 70 GTO was the prettiest, if not the sleekest. Uh, maybe sleek's not the right word. I, it was, I think it would have been a lot better looking car if it was about seven-eighths the size. It was just, it was, it was big. Um, of course, that made it easy to work on the engine. I could basically sit on the sit on the radiator support and rebuild my quadrajet, which I had done on a number of occasions. Uh, this kit was one of the first kits I built using um, Duplicolor paint. Um, most of it came out okay. For some reason, the hood came out a little crackly. Um, I've tried polishing it down, and there's no clear or anything on it. And this, again, this model was... This model is a good 35 years old and has been sitting in a in a display in a box most of that time. Um, but that's an MPC 70 GTO. I'm grabbing that because it's it's a 
it's a special kit to me of a special car and a special build. Next build. Is this uh, 69 uh, Plymouth GTX? Uh, whoa, just knocked my camera over. 69 Plymouth GTX uh, was uh, built from the original MPC kit. Um, I use those old uh, dirt track tires that uh, Matthew likes so much. I think it was Matthew who was talking about how cool they are. Um, built this. About the same time as the GTO, I, I can't remember what I did first. I did a couple little special things to this. Uh, I, I I used um, excuse me, I keep belching up my dinner. Um, and you can kind of see I did. Uh, I made some exhaust tips out of aluminum tubing. Um, the interior came out pretty nice, uh, but what I really what I really liked in this is uh, the engine. And I'm trying to get a photograph here. And I, yeah, you're not going to see anything here. But uh, engine has got a lot of detailing on it. Um, I, I went with the 440 because, you know, everybody puts Hemis in their GTXs and I want something different. I also went with two four barrels because everybody puts stripe power on 440s and I wanted something different. Uh, you, you can kind of see in there, and I'll do some, I'll post some photos in another video of this at a later date. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a build I'm very proud of. Um, at the time I built this, it was probably, it probably was the best build I've ever done. And I can look back now and say that uh, in the era of building that was the 80s and 90s for me, uh, this probably represents the, the best model I've built before or since. Um, as far as level of detail, quality, the build overall, the paint on this is unique. The paint is a mix. Um, I mixed... Tester's stoplight yellow and stoplight red to get an orange. And I mixed that with Tester's clear to give it some gloss. And um, I sprayed it over, uh, I can't remember if it was white or silver. I mean, you could probably see some overspraying here somewhere. Uh, but anyway, that's that's uh, that's the GTX. Um, I love these mag wheels. To me, I always thought I, I had a had a friend in my neighborhood that had a '69 GTX, and he had these keys. I think they're Keystones uh, on his car. His was silver. Um, both of these models, both the uh, G the GTO and the uh, GTX, are probably the first kits I did with uh, using bare metal foil. So uh, that's uh, that's kit number two. I'm grabbing these two because. They're both important to me. This one, I think, uh, I can still point to and say this was probably one of the, if not one of the best builds for quality of build. Um, probably one of the best details kits I've ever done. Um, heck, I wound wound throttle springs out of a single uh, single wire thread from a piece of stranded wire and uh, put linkage on there and used, uh, I guess, with Detail Master linkage. And again, this is another kit that was done somewhere in the late 80s, early 90s. So it's, uh, it's you know, 25, 35 years old. Um, and it's, it's held up well. Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, I'm going to run. Zombies are coming. i got to get that atomic cannon built real quick so I can blow them away. And uh, again, I want to give a, give a shout out to, to Jason Van Haskam at uh, Blue Ox Model Shop for suggesting this build, this, uh, this video series. And I better go because I'm up to 18 minutes now. Goodbye.